Uh, this is the Warren Finance Committee meeting of September 9th, 2013. That is 7:10. We will commence. Uh, first item on the agenda is roll call. Um, this is the first time we actually are fielding most of an eight-member Warren Finance Committee uh, team here. Um, I a, a quick look. I, I find that we've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, standing members and one alternate member. We need to field six members for voting. So there's really no decision making here. We're uh, one, two, three, four. No, excuse me, there is. We have seven members. Oh, I checked off names. Okay, we have six members and we need six voters. So no decision making we should be good to go with primary and uh, excuse me, standing and alternate members. Mr. Chairman, I understand then that I will be voting member tonight. You certainly will. Um, and we'll actually be going over the um, in item presentation of Warrant Finance Committee materials, which is item one in the uh, new business. Uh, we will be talking about the Warrant Finance Committee ordinance being the first meeting of the year, and that will talk about who votes and who doesn't vote. But yes, um, we have six. Members who are eligible to vote here tonight, so all six of them. Moving on, uh, approval of agenda. And we have, uh, you'll see in your second, excuse me, actually, you're sitting right in front of you, the agenda as written. Um, I will make a, a note that there's one extra, it's actually not a meeting, it's a uh, public hearing that's going to be going on to the G. Um, that is the public hearing for this question we're debating tonight. So I'll be adding that, but other than that, um, looking for a motion on approval agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as written. Any other additions and commentary? Thank you. The agenda is approved. Oh, excuse me. All in favor? No. Yes. Okay. Everybody? Yes? No? Okay. Thank you. I voted twice. <laughs> We're going for the quality and the quality. So we actually have six members. That is unprecedented. Thank you. Uh, next item is approval of minutes. Uh, you will find the June 12, 2013 meeting minutes, and that was actually uh, just prior to town meeting. It was the last meeting of last year. Um, for those who were not present at that meeting, um, I mean, we really, really only need a majority of those present here tonight, which would be four, to approve it. Um, you can choose to vote or not, uh, and if you choose to vote, it would be simply uh, approving with some confidence that it's correct based on who wrote it, which would be me. So, you know, it's a crapshoot. Uh, but anyway, the, the members who were present at the time were myself, Dennis Long, Mark Lowell, Holly Mooney, and of those, only two are here tonight. So I think I'll be looking for a confidence vote, vote more than anything else uh, because we're going to need more people than that were there that night. Um, bottom line is the sole amount of business for that night was approval of four sets of minutes. And those four sets of minutes um, are already, as of about uh, four days ago, posted to actingmain.org. And that was the sole business. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Can I have a second on that? Sure. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of June 12, 2013. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve the minutes? One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. All in all opposed. Okay. And who is it that is saying? Tom, thank you. OK, 
Okay, moving on, no one finished business, uh, new business. Okay, so Warren Finance Committee materials. Um, if you turn a page, you will find after the minutes. Uh, Warren Finance Committee ordinance. Um, I find that it's handy to review what our job is and what our job isn't at the beginning of the year. Just so we're as much on the same page as possible. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's uh, two, about two pages long. Uh, there's a copy of this. I just printed this off today from activemain.org. There's a section uh, that's ordinances. You can print off more and find this committee ordinance. So I just want to review the, the, amount, the sections that will be particularly germane to us. Um, first off, we are an advisory body. In no way, shape, or form are we, do we um, consent to anything. We simply advise. And there are several examples of, of when we would advise. One is for new warrant uh, articles that are going to be coming before town meeting, whether they be regular town meeting or special town meeting. That's why we're here tonight. Um, the other possibility would be to provide non-binding recommendations to warrant articles during article development. Uh, that's a little bit more rare. And the third possibility is that we have a warrant article that's been written, and there are several of them in the regular town meeting, that state something like approving expenditures, um, a, basically a quote, with a recommendation of the warrant finance unit. So in those situations, if something comes up where um, the selectmen want to spend money from that particular account, then in theory we'd be meeting and we'd provide a recommendation for that as well. Uh, the committee is six standing members plus two alternates. Um, item D, there shall be four voting members present at a committee meeting to cons uh, constitute a quorum. We have actually six tonight. Again, that's, that's good, that's really unprecedented. Uh, the voting members at a committee meeting shall consist of all standing members present plus a quantity of alternate members as necessary to retain up to six voting members. And that's where we are six. Tonight. There will be nights, theoretically, where we might have more than one alternate member and not enough um, standing members present to make up six, and then we would need to decide which of the alternate members would be voting that evening. Um, it's not specified in the ordinance, um, and I think we'll just have to figure out as we go what the best plan for doing that would be. And tonight, one of the things we're going to be doing uh, Coming up is, this is the first committee meeting following town meeting. We're going to be electing a committee chairman and vice chairman from the ranks of standing members. So alternate members are not eligible for these positions. And I want to point out that these roles are revocable by the same means. If at any time you feel that your chairman or your vice chairman is not doing what they should be doing, um, at any of the regularly scheduled meetings, you can add a an agenda item and take a new vote. The committee is called by the chairman, the vice chairman, in the chairman's absent, uh, absence, or by the selectman. Um, in the three years that I've been associated with the committee, there's never been any uh, calling by the vice chair or the selectman, but it could happen. The only, okay, and I think that's about it that we need to talk about tonight. Uh, but if anybody's looking for the full uh, ordinance, it is up on the web. And I don't think there's anything else that I need to talk about in this section. Any, anything further that anybody would like to talk about in this particular section? Anything that I mentioned or maybe that you just read that I didn't talk about that you know about? Okay, item two, election of chair and vice chair for the 2013-2014 season. Um, I will start off by saying that um, I would not be offended in the least if somebody wanted to take up the position of chair. And I'm sure the vice chair, who is Nancy Ruma, would have a, an equal, uh, equal statement um, she would be ineligible because she's not here tonight, and I want to stick with people who are here tonight. I don't want to foist this on anyone who's not here. Um, 
And that's pretty much all I have to say about that. I nominate Paul Point for chair. Second. <laughs> They're not. Well, actually, um, how? Okay, if there's more than one nomination, I will tell this be close. Okay. <laughs> That'll work. If they're not, we have now. I've never had more than one nomination come up, so it was sort of, that was a sort of unprecedented as well. Mr. Chair, may I make a nomination for Rice? When we get there, yes. We're going to do them one at a time. It's nice, though, Paul, not to lose an election. <laughs> Trying to make you feel good. Okay, then. Yes. We'll go with that. Okay, is there any discussion regarding election chair? All in favor of motion to um, elect me again as chairman of Warren Finance, so signifying. Right? And keep them up. I'd like to count, please. One, two, three, four. Five. All ready then. <laughs> you won that. And, you won I, that position. and I will not go on record as opposed, although I will certainly abstain. You won that position by a bigger margin than I lost the election to Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs to vote. <laughs> is that is that actually true? I think so. That'd be pretty good, but not quite that. It wasn't unanimous. Okay, moving on to vice chair. Um, let's go with the nomination, and I have a couple things I, to say about that. I would like to nominate Joan Ness for vice chair. Sorry. This can only be, you said, from standing members. Standing members. So let's review standing members, shall we? Um, standing members are Tom Cashin, Dennis Long, Holly Mooney. Holly is not here tonight. Uh, Joan Nass, um, I am chair, so I'm not eligible either. Nancy Ruma is not here. So of the, basically we're talking Joan Nass, Dennis Long, Tom Gore, Tom, oh, excuse me, not Tom Gore, Tom Cashin. Three people. Tom Cashin, Dennis Long, Joan Nass. Is it right here and eligible? Just curious, is it, is it written somewhere that the, 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 uh, did we have a second on the yeah. nomination? The vice chair cannot be an alternate? Is that, uh, alternate members cannot be chair or vice chair. Okay. It's, okay. it's ready to warn on the warning okay. side. All right, I'll stick to my That's fine. I'm in a protected spot over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tom and... Yeah, wait and see how quickly you turn into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, alternate members have this disturbing tendency to become standing members at the drop of a hat. So don't you're, you're clear for this meeting, but don't think you're clear for a, for a long time. So um, Tom and who seconded that, please? I did. Okay, it's so been moved and seconded that Joan Nass be elected vice chair for the coming year. Um, Move we close the nomination. If somebody wanted to go with a second for that, we do. Thank you. I'm not even going to call for a vote. Um, okay, so it's been moved and seconded to. Um, Go with Joan for as vice chair. Uh, I will tell you that there have been no official duties of the vice chair for the last three years because okay. essentially all you need to do is run the meetings in my absence, and I haven't been absent yet. So. Can I ask a question? That's pretty much it. Yes. What happens if she doesn't accept? Uh, presumably, she will. Let's see. Normally, um, whoever is up for grabs is going to not vote, but if you choose to vote in the negative for yourself, I would say that that's going to that's going to throw it all down down the tubes. Um, do you accept the nomination before we even vote? Because yes. I would say if you don't, it's a new point. Yes. Thank you. So much for that question. <laughs> I move the nomination to be first. Yes. 
Um, so there's really nothing more that I need to say about that. I mean, that there's basically nothing to do, just a responsibility hanging over your head that hopefully will not be invoked. Will be invoked. Yes. Yes. Um, any any uh, further discussion before we vote? All in favor of the nomination for Joan Nass as vice chair? So soon. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. Is it germane that the Red Sox might be in a race? You're assessing chances of things happening. Is that where you're going? No, I just. I, this goes back to my initial comment. Sorry, that went over my head. Remedy is the solo way. Uh, well, nobody ever accused me of being witty, so don't expect anything. Just be brief. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, item three, and the last item we're really going to talk about tonight, special town meeting warrant, fire engine pump repair, discussion, and recommendation vote. Um, what I'd like to do is get a uh, motion on the floor first. Um, then I'm going to paraphrase the warrant article that we're talking about. And then I'm going to turn the floor over to our guests for a brief set of commentary. So can we have a motion regarding, well actually, before we go with the motion, let me just read the thing. Let's do things in more or less the correct order here. Okay, so what we have is a special town warrant for Thursday, September 26, 2013 at 7 p.m. Now, it doesn't say where, but I read elsewhere. Oh, excuse me, yes, Acton Town Hall. So, this is not a, this is not a, um, an, a vote at the polls. This is actually coming into Town Hall and taking a vote on that. Right. Because whether it be written or not. Right. Because of the numbers we've had the last two town meetings, uh, the school meeting and the regular meeting, we decided to just have it up here instead of okay. having all the school staff have to set up and everything else, and then we have 25 minutes in the short. It doesn't sound terribly dangerous. Because then we have to go right into a selectman's meeting after this, so that's all we do here. Thank you. Okay, Article 1, to choose a moderator for said meeting. Article 2, to see if the town will vote to, appro to appropriate up to $25,000 from the undesignated fund balance for fire truck engine number one repairs. Um, now, selectmen did already give their recommendation, correct? correct? And that's not on here, but selectmen have already recommended uh, that this article, article two be approved. We have not yet given our recommendation that will happen tonight. And I'm looking for a motion on this question, or this article, or what we're gonna do with this article to debate further. Uh, motion to recommend the article was written. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the article. Approve as written. Thank you. Okay, the question is on the floor for discussion. So I'll turn it over to our guests for opening remarks. Hey, good evening. Um, Chief Smith from the Acting Fire Department. I want to thank all you guys for coming and put some time in for this. Um, I just want to give a little quick synopsis of why we were looking for the funding to fix this fire truck. Um, it's our engine one. It's our primary pumper. Unfortunately, uh, we had a pump test done in June. Unfortunately, it failed. So um, I made an inquiry to further inspect on why it failed. As they tore the pump down, um, they found a lot of physical problems were uncovered to prevent further use of the pump. Um, I don't know if you know a lot about the pumps, but it's the main part of the vehicle that pumps water. And obviously it's worse, it's worse for the fire. It's the heart of the pump, it's the bad part of it, it's not just simple parts. On the outside, it's, it's the main part of the pump that's destroyed. Um, so again, I'm here requesting the funds needed to repair the pump. Um, with that being said, the company had given us a quote to do the repairs. They requested a third of that funding prior to even going forward with fixing the pump, it is to actually order the pump. It's a very expensive piece of equipment. So talking with the selectmen, 
one evening we agreed on that probably a good idea because this is our primary engine. Uh, it's only well, just over a third of its life span, so it has a lot of life left in it. Unfortunately, we had a catastrophic pump fair on the thing. Um, so we put in, let's see, $7,305 for the third amount that they requested to get the pump away. Took that out of my budget. Um, on the anticipation that we would get reimbursed because that's like 75% of my vehicle maintenance budget. Vehicles and fire trucks are very expensive to repair, obviously. This was a little more than what my budget could handle. So. Um, also, the pump was going to take, by the time they get done the process, the eight minutes between eight to ten weeks. I'm guessing it'll probably be longer. Anytime we dealt with anything to do with fire service, it seems to take longer than what they always guesstimate to give us. So. However, we do have coverage set up with a mutual aid in town to help cover us out. Uh, why we were waiting to have this engine done. This engine is up in Auburn, um, already partially torn down, and uh, I gotta tell you, we really miss it. We've had a lot of calls where we really needed that truck because that truck's been equipped very well. I will throw out thank goodness for Chichester's truck that we are loaning from them that has bailed us out. Uh, I wish I wrote down some of the statistics on the amount of times that's rolled out of the building, but. Uh, the dying need to get this engine back in service is really important to us and the citizens back. Yes. You have ordered the pump. Yeah, I've ordered the pump. Just to expedite right. the process going when forward. When did you order it? Two weeks ago. Yeah, I say two weeks ago. Yeah. So we'll get a two week jump on this okay. meeting. So you still have to wait six weeks? Six to eight weeks, yes. yes. Hopefully. Do you know why There is um, a synopsis of what they had said. Uh, I think you have that packet. Um, let's see, the uncovered preventer, let's see, impeller and wear rings. Damage also prevents there continuing to use signs of a water hammer event, which is, again, their, this is their assumption, doesn't mean that's exactly what happened, but years of experience, this is what they're anticipating might have happened. A water hammer is when you get a big, large volume of water that's coming all at once and not at a controlled, uh, yeah, just coming in and hammer, hammer, pump. Because the impellers are uh, brass, right? Brass, no, brass. Yeah, bronze. Bronze. So, they're steel engines. Not very strong, so if you're getting the five inch water hammer you know, coming down, and again, it's either you know, like a mutual aid town feeding our range too fast, or you're inside and opening and closing the nozzle real fast because of the situation. But again, this is what they're anticipating, not necessarily what it happened. They're also saying another route is cavitation, uh, you drop, your pump is in there running dry, so that would heat it up and warm it up. That also would wear down on, on that as well. Another thing is, um, unfortunately, like the cities, we have to suck out of ponds, hydrants, dry hydrants, so we suck up a lot of rocks. Rocks also go in there and beat up those impellers and break off things. So it, we don't really know exactly what happened, but it did take a pump out. And it's, it's nice. Does it happen often? Um, again, it, this is the first time I remember cha uh, changing, repairing a pump, but other surrounding towns I've talked, it, it happens. It's a it's a food thing, but it does happen. Yes. I was just wondering if this is something because it takes so long if, if there was any way to have a spare or something hanging around to Well like everything else, nobody wants to have parts on shelf. It's a lot of money to stock parts and do all that stuff. So no they you don't also as have need. to take a whole lot of part to get to it. You know, based on this. Yes. Yes, they have to cut some of the frame members out. It's it's that pump was built in place. Our new engine is being built, it's gonna be much more accessible, so if there's any pump issues a lot less to get access to. It. Now they have to rebuild parts and they put it back in cross members and stuff like that. So that's another reason why the expenses are May I, Mr. Chairman, go to that issue? I'd like to go to the issue of that cross member. Are we reasonably assured that in in removal and restoration of that uh, chassis cross member that they're doing that in accordance with Peterville procedures. Yes. Okay. And I'll certify. Yep. Good. Okay. 
And there's a section in here that also talks about when it's restored, it will be apparently bolted together or something. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so that it's that something else that's bolted instead of welded or whatever. Yeah, correct. And that's important to a beer, though. Yes. And again, with the last thing we restored it, one company, so we're not worried about cabin chassis and product. One company we have to deal with instead of two million beer houses. Is there any chance that uh, we could have some insurance to cover the cost of things like that? The only time you'd be able to get insurance reimbursement on that if we know exactly what happened and when it happened. And I, we don't know. Mm -hmm. It happened and it's been failing and we kind of knew it was failing that's, and we had the buck test to so right. that it did sure. not pass and it failed. I'm not going to say miserably, but it didn't do very well. We did get the insurance on the one that died uh, at the fire because they knew that it had gone through a pothole like a week or two sure. before or something like that. And that's when the oil holes broke off so it wasn't getting enough oil in. So the insurance company covered that whole truck. Right? But, but that's a different truck, right? Well, right, but that's because they knew when it happened. They don't know when this happened. They didn't even know it had happened until they did a test on it. Right? And, and what happened with that money? The money from the insurance for that truck. They went into, it went into the fire truck. Yeah, into the new fire truck. Went into the fire truck. Yeah. Right. So it went towards buying that new fire truck. I don't want you to think, Pete, that I'm against uh, fixing this because I'm not. But uh, we have is it fifteen thousand that we set aside for emergencies under the load one every year. Uh, yeah, they were discussing that because that was probably the possibility that we could use uh, towards this mm -hmm. instead of taking the whole 25 out of the undesignated fund balance. Mm -hmm. um, the selectmen uh, did raise the tax rate a little bit this year, not much, but a little bit, to try to keep the undesignated fund up. Uh, they're still trying to get another $300,000. Uh, hopefully another year or two. Uh, so it just a school of thought is if we took that fifteen thousand uh, dollars that we wrote for stuff like this, and if we sold uh, the old fire truck over there, it wouldn't give enough money to pay, you know, for what you want. I, I wouldn't imagine. But uh, it would be pretty close. And where this would hopefully be online by the end of November. And you're going to have your other new truck hopefully by the end of November. If we have any kind of luck at all, which we haven't had, but yes. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if things go well, uh, I would like to think with this truck here, uh, hopefully you won't have any more serious problems with it for a while with a new truck that you hopefully wouldn't have to use that much of your maintenance money uh, in maintaining your primary fleet. And uh, I just think that in your maintenance budget that between the 15000 what you could get, I mean if you haul that truck down to Lambert's down there, I mean you're still going to get quite a bit of money, just junk price. That's about 2000 you know what I mean? Uh, I, I just think that's another alternative of uh, paying, paying for it. That's yeah, all. I just want to, you know, the maintenance budget, just because the trucks are new, there's still, you know, with the pump testing, there's all these uh, BLS requirements that we have to do. It's not necessarily... Oh, I understand. There's a broken tire, I mean, the tires are not, but it's still expensive just to keep the maintenance and the certification up there. Well, I'm looking at the two trucks, we're looking at the total fleet maintenance. Oh, There's five, five, five vehicles there, and three of them are quite elderly. I understand <laughs> that, but I also know that uh, in the past, you guys have taken some chances and uh, been conservative, mm -hmm. and things have worked out for the best in the end, and it worked out. And uh, I just think under the circumstances and the fairness to uh, the people paying the bill, mm -hmm. That uh, that be an alternative. Can I answer that? Yeah. Um, the fifteen thousand, we're giving permission to use that in an emergency, but we still have to come back to you guys and ask if you use that, and that would come on the out of the undesignated fund. 
So if we figured instead of doing that, instead of coming in and saying, okay, we've got an emergency, which we would have to wait, we would have to let him keep using his budget now so he'd be cutting into all these other departments in order to pay the $21,000. Then we come to you and we say, okay, can we have $25,000? We looked at, when they came to us as office, first month of the budget year, and we're gonna wipe them on out of their yearly budget by 25,000. If we don't do that, then we go to the 15,000, it's still coming out of the same place. It's coming out of the undesignated fund. So there's no tax increase anywhere in here because it's money that's already in the bank that we're just asking the town to let us use. The other thing we looked at was the money that was in the new fire truck fund. But it took so long to get that started and then we still had to borrow money anyways, but we didn't want to touch that. You know, we're going to ask the town to take it out of there because fire truck, fire truck money. Um, so that's why we chose to go this route, um, so that they do have their ten thousand dollars in their maintenance in, in order to, you know, do oil changes and if buy new tires or whatever they got to do, because that's pretty much what that's been used for in the past, um, and not affect the rest of their budget by us taking, you know, say, um, I don't know. Uh, their new equipment, their new uh, SCBA tanks that the town voted for. If we take 15000 they that's where, if I was, you know, it was my budget, I would say, okay, I'm not going to take it out of my running funds, I'm going to take it out of new equipment, we're just going to have to skip a year. But they're getting to the point where they're getting all that equipment built up to where it needs to be, and the town has voted for that, so that's why we chose to go this way. Is Jan coming as well? Um, well, the the um, options that I heard before this meeting basically are, are it's, it's essentially stated, and I wasn't aware beforehand about the fact that we had to put third down. But my understanding was that um, either the town votes this in and we take the 25 out of undesignated funds and don't impact the fire department's rest of the budget, including the maintenance fund, which has. Well, actually, the repair maintenance right now has thirty-two hundred dollars in it at this moment. Well, uh, that's because we took the uh, the first payment out thing. Ah, uh, the thing to get processed. I got you. So, okay, so so theoretically, that's going to be restored right. once this money comes through. Okay, right. so really six thousand, is, which is the full maintenance budget right now, would be available plus the fifteen for emergency. There would still be money any way you sliced it coming out of. Fire okay. department budget somewhere, um, and I guess the bottom line here, the important point is that whichever way the town votes, the intent is that this money will be spent, that truck will be repaired, and it's just a matter of the fine details. Okay. Um, my questions related to that really are because I wasn't, I was a little uh, vague on the actual fire trucks that are actually that are out there in the in the building. I, I, I've certainly seen the one sitting in the parking lot, which is the one that had the oil pickup that failed. Um, so you said this is the main pumper. Do we have any other pumpers? This is our primary pumper. That was our secondary pumper, which is being built right now. We have a tanker as well. That's basically a truck that hauls volume of the water. We have an army truck surplus vehicle that was given to us by the state for a force unit. It's a big 10 wheel drive, two and a half ton, uh, two and a half five ton, whatever it is. Yeah, it, it's old. It's been bailing us out, but we that's that's in critical condition right now. I am working with the state on trying to upgrade that to get to at least a 1980 truck, which would be leaps and bounds over that one. And we have a uh, little small. Uh, mini slash forestry pumper as well. Plus our squad vehicle, all, all the uh, life support stuff for uh, boat operations, the UTV operations, first response when it rescues out of service. When we have a boat and the UTV that the Stephen King, gave, Stephen King grant bought for us. That uh, six wheel all-terrain vehicle that they bought for us and tax day, paid the dollars paid for that. But running the low on usable fire trucks is the bottom. Line. Yes, and on usable fire trucks, as we was going through the process of the new fire truck, we've tried five, I believe, used fire trucks. Mm -hmm. Five times we tried to register, inspect, and get going, and all five miserably failed. So, used fire trucks is not a good practice if you can get to it unless you buy 
a really good refurbished huge fire truck and it might be worth your while. The cheap and free fire trucks, there's a reason why they're cheap and free. <laughs> just, also, if I just could, um, it mentioned fairness and uh, conservative. Yes, we've been very, trying to be fair and conservative to the town. And it kind of almost bit us in the butt just recently with the uh, Jaws of Life. Because we used to service those every year, but I mean, that's expensive. So we tried to go like every other year. And unfortunately, we had a horrific accident. Shaft, we went mutual aid for, for the set of jaws. And uh, we have a two bank set of jaws. You can run two tools at the same time. Um, the accident prior to that, like two weeks before that, like, we was having an issue with it. So we rigged it the best we could, made it run, and it's running. The second accident, a couple weeks later, that whole bank failed on us. So we lost 50% of our working tool and got that young child out of the vehicle almost cost of either life or death. So trying to be conservative is good sometimes, but I'm not gonna say we failed this really on the jaws, but what those are going out to be served. It's a, it's a priority. But running down the main is fun at the beginning of the year. <coughs> Unfortunately fire tools are very expensive, but they save lives. That's the best thing to save for Smart doctors. Excuse me? Smart doctors. <laughs> I'll leave that comment. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, Possibility that you mentioned about sucking rocks out of the pond or whatever. Yes. Is there a any kind of even you know, a coarse type of screen in there somewhere that maybe keeps there are filters in the system we'll that keep most of the large rocks out? Yeah. yeah. And the method we do it typically a, a floating strainer to keep it off the bottom. But you always when you draft you always get sand and small bits of debris that just are constantly wearing on the pond. Right. A screen, I don't know, probably eight inch gap holes. But they need to be big enough so you get the volume the right. volume you need. If you right. get it too restricted, it'd be like you can't get any pressure. Like, all right, yeah, so you just keep going. Yeah. Just like venting a building, when you open a window on the screen, you're in, it vent very slow. You take the screen out, it's yeah. you know, building up in no time. Having seen what happens in washing machines, I fully agree with that. I know there's. Does anybody else have anything ready? Uh, for questions, I want to do more. I, need to... I have one question, Mr. Yes. Chairman, if I may. And it, it's, it's, a, it's, it's general information. Um, the fifteen thousand dollars that you uh, fifteen thousand dollar fund that you referenced, that is, I'm not aware of this fund. Is it? Is this in the hands of the select fund? Is this a contingency it's, fund, or is it? it what it is, is we vote every year. It's a one, uh, one article that we have every year, and it says it can the select fund spend up to $15,000 in a oh, okay. calendar year with the advice and consent of the uh, Warren Finance. So we can't just go spend it. We have to come and have a meeting with Warren Finance and say, okay, the well was gone and we want to put a new well, you know, something like that. So we still we don't want to use that either because who knows what other emergency we'll have between now and next year. That used yeah, to yeah, be no, 5000 right. Yeah. Okay, I remember now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, for the last I four years, including this <laughs> past one, it was uh, 15000 and okay. it's, it was Article 7. Yeah, it's we not changed that the year that they bought that fire truck that went the devil on. You know, we changed it the following year because we had 5000 and realized that we couldn't buy anything for $5,000. <laughs> so that's why that year there, the following year, we changed it to fifteen. Thank you, guys. But if you don't use it, it just stays there, right? You don't yeah, it stays right in the designated fund unless we use it. No more, huh? <laughs> we have at least one more in here. Apologize for the delay. I feel a little shakily. You already have one on the table, do <laughs> There is uh, one more thing I can bring up, if I could. Sure. Um, just last month's uh, MMA uh, magazine uh, had an article about, um, although the law is gray in the area of whether or not a public hearing is needed on an open special town meeting, depending on the question, the, uh, the board has decided to be proactive and schedule one. Uh, in the past, we've never had a public hearing prior to a town meeting, but MMA is suggesting now that you probably should. So this will be our first time having a, a public hearing before a uh, town meeting. 
better safe than sorry. Right. Um, actually, a couple things. The truck itself is, it's what, 10, it's 10 years into our use or 10 years into its use? Was it used when we bought it? No, 10 years into our use. In 10 years into our use, and it's a 40-year lifetime, theoretically. Excuse me? And it's a 40-year lifetime, not 30-ish. We're pushing 30. <laughs> We've gone to 30. 30? Yeah. They usually stay here longer than that, is by our 1955 and our 84. Yeah, yeah but sometimes they're pretty long in the tooth when we get in the first place. Yeah, no, that was a brand new truck. Korea trucks are going out every day for 20 years, and we're hoping to get 30 out of them. Do you have a guess as to say, and I'm not even going to go with unrepaired, but the repaired cost of this truck is presumably some significant zeros involved in this thing, right? I mean, we're putting 20 grand into it. Yes. And, you know, what's the, what do you feel would be the value if we were to go sell it after? We're not going to. But right. if we were to go sell it after it was repaired just to get a feel for. Well, just another, yeah, just to throw in the air, it was just the, I think it's. November-ish, we ended up taking uh, engine one, had a, um, it had a paint issue on it, and they put it under the warranty. So we got like almost $10,000 worth of paint slash body work on that vehicle as well. So that kind of boosted us up and gained us some more years down the road that hopefully we won't have to take care of down the road. So that's right. more value to it. And just to give Price cost, I think when we bought that one in 2002, it was $275,000, somewhere around there. The one we just bought now is $390,000, this many years later, so they go up. And one of the reasons why they're going up is because BLS and there's some wisdom comes up with new ideas that you have to have, so it makes the trucks go up. So yes, it'd be well worthwhile to put money in this truck instead of trying to replace this one already. And keep that span between the two engines. So we're it's not such a um, critical bike to the town, unlike back right. in the old days, when the other chief smiths go to the town and say, hey, I need to buy a truck, yeah, go buy it. Well, it's a little different now than back then, we bought three brand new ones. Thank you. Do you, you expect to get another five years of service on that truck once the new pump is in? A lot more than that. A little bit. No, I'm shooting for about 20. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> But it won't use it. Yeah, for 30 years. Okay, because yeah. it's 10 years old. Right? One of the things we're doing, we've kind of transitioned from structure fires to more accidents to the newer vehicle that's coming out and set up for auto accidents, which will take some of the wear and tear off the primary engine. We'll keep that for structure fires and back up as accidents, but the new engine will run for most auto accidents and emergencies like that, so we're breaking the equipment between them and it should give us a lot more wear on engine one because now engine two will be taken up front when it comes on board as a new engine. And then nothing like redundancy as well. That's right. Okay, um, I have no further questions. Um, what I would like to do, um, once everybody thinks at this moment that they're good with questions, I'd like to just, I don't think I want to read every word, but I want to read most of this proposal here because I think it provides good information for uh, the people uh, at home watching this, if there happen to be any. Um, I think it provides good information about what we're trying to decide here. Any further questions at this moment? Okay, so this is... Uh, Dated August 13, 2013, it's an updated estimate for replacing the pump center section assembly in engine one. And this is a 10-year-old uh, fire truck. Uh, dear Chief Smith, after partially disassembling the pump in your engine one, a number of physical problems were uncovered that prevent further use of the pump housing. Impeller and wing rear da wing bleh, 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 wear ring damage also prevent their continued use. Signs of a water hammer event, severe cavitation, galvanic corrosion, overheating, and other forms of damage exist that warrant your consideration of pump center section replacement. Utilizing as many valves, discharges, adapters, intakes, and accessories as possible to mitigate total repair costs. Though we have been able to rework many pump housings to extend their practical service lives, the combination of casting, pump housing, Damage in the belly, main housing, and tank suction flange areas of your pump are severe enough to prevent reasonable mechanical restoration. 
welded housings have been proven to be unreliable and actually create other potential liabilities. Epoxy repairs have been successful in some cases, but not when the damage is as bad as what exists in your pump. Um, they list about 10 or 12 uh, different steps that are going to be needed, but basically it just essentially means ripping out a whole, punch, a whole bunch of the middle bottom section of the truck um, and replacing and assessing as they go. The key element here um, is that there may be some other costs or components required um, as they get into it further, and uh, as such, that will be identified as they come up. And that makes sense. And that's why we asked for permission for twenty-five thousand, but we will only take out the exact amount that the bill comes for. So if it comes out of twenty-two thousand, then we leave three thousand in the anticipated fund. And again, going back to try to be conservative, as we did. You know, if this is over a two-year span of um, not having a pump tested, it's been a, just kept wearing, 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 wearing down as well. Doing preventive pump test maintenance, perhaps could have bought it earlier, perhaps could have been cheaper. I don't know. Is there any change to existing procedures that m might or will be implemented as a result of hindsight 2020, you know? That could yeah. any any preventative measures or any detection measures? You know, you just mentioned one detection measure is perhaps testing it more often. But yeah, as far as the training wise, um, all our pump guys go through a it's a sixteen hour pump course. Actually, it's longer now. It used to be sixteen, and it's actually twenty hours now, I believe. Um, before they pump operation, but again. Stuff that we're doing with our truck and our pump is one thing. We have no control of a mutual aiding company feeding us, and that's where you can get your water in to come in and do the damage to our pump. In a new one, we have uh, put in our spec to try to help prevent that situation, try to help prevent it, not necessarily to guarantee to prevent it, but just just for that particular reason, for other companies doing this. Again, you know, you, you got to figure, we're running four to five inch diameter holes. So if we're downhill, which some of our fires have been, down over in the bank, and we have an engine company feeding us, that volume of water alone, just gravity feeding, is a lot of force. And you know, when they're pushing it with water, because at the heat of the moment, you know, you got lives at stake, people are, I need water, I need water, I need water. They're putting a lot of data and it happened, unfortunately. So is the prevention that you're talking about, is that going to be in this repair or has that been slated for the new fire truck that's going to be coming later on this year, or both? Both. Both. So basically a little bit more robust than what we had before. Yes. So the payment terms at this point is one third upon order. So we have a two week expiry. It has expired so far yes. since the order. Um, you pulled that out of your repair funds, but hope to replace it. Correct. Um, one third upon installation of the pump yes. of the body, and then the balance upon completion, reinstalling the body and putting all this stuff back together. After it tests by itself. Yes, it's pump test and be so lead time on the pump is six to seven weeks, so now we're talking about four to five weeks. I'm guessing eight to ten, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> Being pessimistic does not mean you're out of touch with the world. I've just been dealing with fire trucks here for a couple of years. <laughs> so chances are, because you probably have to drive both of them back, that both trucks are going to come in within two days of each other. But we're, we're talking about what? Mid November, late November, probably for one or both of them. Both of them. Both of them yeah. probably. However, when we get the new one in, it's going to be extensive training on that one, drive time, pump time, so that one will not go in service for a while. But they will be, it will be getting in service as soon as we can. But at least it will be coming. They'll be in the fire, so I'll be happy. Thank you. Um, and just for to 
repeat the number here. And so we're going for up to 25,000. The number that's been quoted here is 21,915. Quote, including parts, labor, uh, excuse me, parts, supplies, labor, trading, and freight. And there is that caveat about possible new or additional problems, which there always is. Again, just Whether or not they stay On the safe side, we bought our truck for 390. Sam just got received a new truck, and it was four plus. So we saved a lot of money on ours. We don't have that, though. We don't have that, correct. Yeah. 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 Really but, they have, but they just ordered it, right? So they're not going to see theirs for a year? Or well, they ordered just prior to us, or right around us, and they just, just got theirs. So oh, okay. Same. Not too same. Same. They got a Pierce. We got a different brand. I mean, we, we chopped off some things just to save money. Yep. And we saved easily $30,000 from the other ones that we spent from the same same job. We got a paint job out of too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that encouraged the paint job for this particular engine right here. Thank you. Any further discussion, questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, we have a motion on the floor to approve um, the, article as written. To approve the article as written, which would be to see if the town will vote to appropriate up to $25,000 from the undesignated fund balance for fire truck engine number one repairs. A second motion. Thank you. All in favor of the motion, so signify. One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. Six represents the total number that are voted tonight, so we'll do with that. Um, moving on, no other business. Uh, next meeting, there will be, and Ted, you can correct me if I'm incorrect on any of this, on Thursday, um, this week, so three days from now, just before the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting, there will be a public hearing on this question. Correct. Um, probably most of these materials that we've been discussing will be available for discussion. Um, that will be at 7 p.m. And then special town meeting on Thursday, September 26th at 7 p.m. Acton Town Hall for the actual special town meeting for the town to vote on this question. Anything else? Yes, we Paul. Go. Yes. Other, other business. I have other business. Uh, you can hold off to the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> only take a minute. Go for it. Um, yeah, well, what you can say is what I'm I, I know. <laughs> some people will be happy, some people won't. Uh, I am very disappointed uh, the way things have turned out in my life lately because this more finance committee that we have this year I uh, was really looking forward to uh, serving with everybody I really thought it was real good led the people but due to circumstances beyond my control uh, through the tonight I'll be uh, giving my resignation to the selectmen uh, as a member of the board finance committee so and again I apologize to everybody I, I was really looking forward to working with everybody this year so, Tom, sorry to hear that, Dennis. <laughs> I guess you are. I'm very sorry to hear that. <laughs> we might have to have a discussion outside about that. I, I, I gave a little chuckle there when you was uh, earlier in the meeting. But, uh, but anyway, I, 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 I just I don't have the time for the... Um, I just don't have the time to deal with it. I have too much on you know, the full plate. That's all I got. When um, is your turn at June. Next year. It's coming. Okay. Um, I didn't know about this um, ahead of time. Um, and I, I certainly am sorry to see Dennis go. I, mean, I think he's been uh, provided some very good um, experience and insight uh, in the past year for Warren Finance. So, you know, his, his um, capabilities will be missed. And what that also means is, according to our ordinance, we'll be moving up the expir expiring 2014 um, alternate member 
So do you want to do election filtering? So that would have to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, I think we better, we better thank Dennis for it. Hope for those that. Food, would food help? <laughs> Cookies? No. <laughs> Any further discussion on that point? So I think uh, we're done with everything we need to do. There were two next meeting uh, announcements that are done. Uh, we should be good to go. Uh, Tom. Yes, sir. I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Uh, I move we adjourn. Second. Uh, we have a second, second. on that? Second. I will bring the red time schedule to share with you. I don't know if that's going to help. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you.